Hey guys, Alex Williamson here with The Secret History Living Inside of Your Aquarium. Tonight we're doing a little video, uh, so you can see it at night, uh, on Wonderstone, aka Rhyolite, and the geology of it and how it impacts your fish tank. So, I want you to notice this stream of bubbles, if you can, that's coming from the rock. So, just keep that in mind as we talk about this, but this rock, uh, it occurs in Papua New Guinea, in Chile, uh, it occurs in New Mexico, and Nevada, and Arizona also. They sell it at the store, like PetSmart or Petco, as Wonderstone, um, or variations of that, and they'll cut it into these arches that are supposed to look like a natural shape, but they're not. Um, it's done over overseas. They get mass quarrying amounts of it and then they uh, core it out so that it's stackable or so that it looks like an arch or a shell or a cave or whatever. Um, but you can find it on eBay or if you live in one of the, the uh, southwest Sonoran states, uh, you can also just find it all over. There's entire mountains made out of this stuff. This is why this tank has been dubbed the Arizona tank. Now this one has no algae on it yet. These other ones are versions of different colors of it that do. And they're versions that have um, different uh, densities, different... Uh, mineral content uh the one behind it obviously has iron it has sulfur iron and then it also has some calcium now i have guppies quarries and uh some shrimp some neocardinia shrimp uh caradina shrimp in here and snails so i really am not too worried about water hardness or um any of that business and in fact it's actually good. And it's interesting <laughs> that the, the cats all decided to sit on this. It might be that it's uh, reflecting the heat. Um, it also could be that it's outgassing. So right now, it is turning to nighttime. And things like the kabamba in the background um, are turning, starting to close. So even though the light's still on, it's about to go off. And everything is switching over to its night production and at night the plants let out excess co2 you know they always let out oxygen and those things um throughout the day but whatever gases are present in the water actually get trapped in this stone because if you look at it it has a micro crystalline structure but it's not a perfect one it, it when this is made it's made in explosive volcanoes and it's flowing lava and it gets basically blasted by hot air and it comes out of a pressurized ground and instead of getting something like pumice you get this and oftentimes it's made up of uh, limestone and other rock that has been melted into lava with other igneous rock bases and it actually the red in it is not from iron this is a very low iron content rock um, Ferdinand von Richtenstoff, uh, is the man who did all of the early research on it, a uh, German man, as I was saying earlier, uh, this rock has some interesting mineral, uh, occurrences in it, and that's because the bottom of the ocean is made up of shells and carbon and calcium, uh, Carotene um, or keratin, uh, lots of different things that have basically come from living creatures and died and been compressed. Same with like old shallow lake beds from three or four hundred million years ago. Well, that gets pressurized, and in some cases, those organic and biological things, like in freshwater swamps, turn into oil. But in this case, uh, those crab shells and shrimp and all of that at the bottom was compressed under great heat and force. And along the way somewhere, sulfur was also injected into the lava flow. And this came out as a banded source. It's probably in a mountain range it was chipped off of. You can see here the reason that it's bubbling and outgassing like that is because it has a, uh, a porous structure 
if we can get the, this to zoom in real quick. Uh, and you can see those micro cracks, and that's where the bubbles are coming from. They're coming from specific areas that are micro like lava tubes almost in the rock and it releases this really fine uh, trail of bubbles and it will do this off and on it does it towards the end of the day usually uh, and when you first put it in the tank it bubbles like crazy and a lot of people <laughs> have asked me is my rock acidic it, I heard that if it bubbles it's acidic and it's gonna kill my fish no um, what's happening here is that it is a porous rock and it absorbs any gas in the water which is pretty cool um, if you want if you want that in your tank now for me I do I want my plants to be getting co2 and stuff and so from the fish breathing all day and things uh, decomposing and all that it's absorbing co2 and oxygen and with the plant cycle they're getting ready to go to bed closing up and they have are switching from photosynthesis and making um, making uh, oxygen and sugars and starch from sunlight or my lamp and they are switching over to using co2 and nutrients in the ground uh, predominantly instead uh, to produce their energy, their ATP, which is a cellular growth factor in all organisms that we know of pretty much. Um, and because of that, this rock will actually bubble when the, the water is changing. If I turn off the bubbler in the back corner, the, the filter, sponge filter, this rock, uh, sometimes called like striped jasper or picture jasper incorrectly, that's a different stone, but um, this rhyolite, which is the correct name, uh, releases those bubbles of whatever the water was at earlier. So if it was really oxidized earlier, it will release bubbles. And of, of that former ox oxygenated water or that uh, carbon dioxide in the water. So you have to be careful if you have an entire tank of this stuff, there is a small chance that you could like gas your fish in theory if you didn't have um, enough water flow. And where you usually get um, outgassing in water and gases building up into water is at the top. So when it, it breaks the surface, it's then injected into the water. So you're getting the most uh, oxygen and other gases it put into the water in the bubbles at the surface. So like over here, there's a lot of that going on. In this corner, it's very quiet. And so you're seeing that oxygen leaving the stone, um, which it has absorbed from the plants around it. There's some Monte Carlo, there's some baby tears, there's some Bacopa, um, what else is around the base of there? There's some Repens, um, and then there's a big old java fern. Uh, so in any case, I just wanted to show you this because it's kind of cool, and it's a pretty stone. It looks, it looks very nice. You can also break it and fracture it in ways. It allows you to do nice landscapes. I haven't done it here just because I'm showing you uh, this in the video, but you can allow it to go along with the banding in the rock. So it really can look like a mountain range, you know, it really can uh, have a cool look. Some of it is more jagged and rough than others. Uh, and this stuff is nice and waterlogged. This one hasn't had a chance to have algae grow and it's only been in the tank for a, while, uh, a shorter amount of time. After a while, the algae kind of seals it off almost and the surface tension of the water. But while this stone is new for days and days, it will be outgassing pretty intensely. I mean, that's like the same as a CO2 outgasser. So there's even potential to like put these in a CO2 chamber and then use them, uh, you know, as, as CO2 for the tank and, uh, I've even thought about experimenting with taking a CO2 in a vacuum chamber and taking some porous gravel and allowing it to uh, take the gas in and then slowly release that gas through the water because this is about the rate of, you know, for this tank that you'd want CO2 expelled. So just kind of an interesting little quirk of this stone. Um, 
the other funky thing about it is that it's great for brackish water or for um, water with fish that aren't super finicky that like minerals in their water. Um, or a higher pH is, uh, it also is another thing. Um, it can drop the pH depending on where it's sourced. I mean, if it has a lot of calcium and carbon in it, then there's a good chance it will drop that. But this specific uh, type is pretty neutral to the pH in the tank, if not actually boosting it a little bit. But normally with red in a rock, you would assume that that's some sort of iron deposit, and it's not at all in this case. It's actually crushed up iodine from shells uh, of, of shrimp and krill and things at the bottom of the ocean that's been pressurized and heated into a stone uh, and liquid lava, for that matter. Um, so kind of a cool stone it was uh discovered in 1860 and so it's been known for a while and it's the state stone of nevada wonder stone or rhyolite and that is the little um i guess workup or profile on wonder stone and how stones can outgas and that can be good or bad but you just want to you know put it in a bucket test it out if you can, uh, there's CO2 testers, there's oxygen testers, things like that. There's chemicals that turn different colors. Um, and then there's also, if, if you're really into it, like if you're keeping cichlids or some sort of, you know, crystal bee shrimp or something like that, Taiwan bee shrimp, uh, you want to be careful because even at the store that I got this from, which is a great little local uh, fish store called The Fish Store in Seattle. It's our oldest fish store here. Um, even in that bin, it's sourced from different parts of the mountain. And maybe there was a, you know, a tube of like really pure sulfur in there and it, you can actually smell it. And that might not be as good. It's probably not going to hurt most fish, but like I said, if they're sensitive, it could. In my case, it's great because these are guppies. This is what they like. <clears throat> they like some minerality in their water, and so do my uh, blue dream and blue velvet shrimp that are hanging out in here. The quarries don't mind it either, uh, and neither does the endler. So, as long as you got your tank planted and you've got a good oxygen source, it's nothing but good stuff to put in your tank, and this whole tank is done with different versions of of that stone. So... Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you find a way to use it. It'd be cool if you guys have any pictures of it carved up, um, even to look natural. This is when it's been really weathered, and like it was probably crumbling on the face of the cliff when when the people who brought it to the uh, distributor found it. And now there's all sorts of algae growing on it because my snails and my shrimp are slackers. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I need to feed them for a while. Honestly, it's been growing so quickly on there. Whereas other kinds, some are even like anaerobic. Like they don't, you know, some are great for bacteria and being a, a sponge of it, the old weathered stuff. And other versions have been in the tank just as long and they are not growing anything on them. They have a, a denser crystal, uh, makeup and like this one if you can see is outgassing very little it's been in there for i believe two months now that that piece there and that piece as well as this piece so choose your pieces you know texture density and color do make a difference it's not just an aesthetic thing this one is like the feeding platform or pride rock for all my snails and inverts, uh, as well as quarries too, seem to munch on it from time to time. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys because I thought that's kind of interesting that we've got this rock that is just producing uh, gas. I mean, think how much must be trapped in there. But it takes up, it, it recharges in water and then it and then it um, discharges in water also. Whenever the, there's a big change in the gas uh, density in the water, you'll see that. So also when high and low pressure changes in the house, like on, if it's really low pressure outside and indoors, we haven't really opened the door all day, or you open one window on one side and another on the other, then you'll see that. And it's, it's kind of cool to, 
to see it uh, start bubbling because of that. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your fish tank. And uh, I'll see you next time. Keep on swimming.